Miami on three four. Uh, let's try one more time, and if I can't get you, we can wait five or ten minutes and try again. So one more time, real clear, real loud, and real slow. Hey, what's happening, guys? Today we're taking a look at this little guy right here. This is the True SDX, which is a very low-powered um, QRP ham radio transceiver. It uh, covers, I think, I think it covers five different bands. Let me see here. Yeah, uh, it covers 80, 60, 40, 30, and uh, the 20 meter bands with. I don't know, probably about a 5-watt output. Uh, yeah, 5-watt output from 13.8-volt uh, power supply. Now, it does have a, uh, a USB port, and it says it can produce about a half a watt direct from the USB port. What's really interesting about this is you see it has the, the these little buttons in here, and this, this is a 0.96-inch OLED display. I mean... Yeah, there's probably an Arduino in here. In fact, I'm almost sure of it. There's there's at least an Atmega 328P, you know, the heart of the Arduino in here. So this is pretty cool. And as you heard, um, the sound is not terrific. And that's coming from an external speaker. The uh, sound from the internal speaker is even worse. I have it uh, turned way down there. We can turn on the external speaker here again. And what that uh, probably could be is the uh, the beat frequency oscillator. Could be off a little bit, but it's not something I'm going to worry about. So let's uh let's take this thing open up and uh, see what's going on inside of it. Let me power it down. And we'll, uh, we'll disconnect the antenna first. Doesn't really matter. Actually, it'd probably be easier to disconnect the power. Then I can spin that and get the antenna off. So you can see here, we've got an SMA for our uh, antenna for, you know, both receive and transmit. And we've got 3.5 millimeter jacks for audio. So that would be your, uh, your ear. Mic and key, so you can use an external microphone. It does have an internal one. In a key if you're doing uh, Morse code. Uh, PA over here is for the, uh, uh, I'm guessing something, the Keeley power amp out. I'll have to look that up. And then we have a couple of different buttons along with the encoder, which is, of course, also clicky. All right, so let's open this up. This is a uh, two millimeter hex bit. And this radio belongs to my, my good friend, Jim. He's the one that I go to the uh, Poto with, parks on the air. So he asked me to uh, get this thing on FT8. I thought I had it, but it, uh, it turns out to be much more difficult than I thought. So, all right, I'm going to get a power screwdriver. This is going to take a while. All right. I think we got the bottom panel off here. And what do we see on the bottom? Well, this is the filter board. So, that's good to know there's filters. A lot of big resistors there. Okay, so here you can see true SDX five band RF board with SWR revision uh, 1.0. So yeah, like it says on here, this was created by DL2MAN, a guy from Germany, Manuel Karenig, Karenig and uh, PE1NNZ from the Netherlands who simply goes by Guido. And they made this thing to be a very low cost way to start playing with uh, 
high frequency radio. Uh, depending on where you are, you're probably going to need a license to transmit. You can listen to anything you want. But generally to transmit, you're going to need a license. And uh, historically, the radio has been the biggest barrier to, you know, New Ham's getting into the hobby. Because they're ridiculously expensive. And that is one of the reasons that I like the little cheap Chinese radios. All right, let's see. So it looks like these sides should just pop out. But I don't want to hurt anything. We'll go ahead and take that nut off. Oh, the whole top just fell off. That's fine. Still trying to figure out... There we go. It's just a tight fit. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is... That is a really nice design. Oh, wow. Yeah. And the whole thing... Just slots together. So you have two separate boards. So this is your, your output board, your filter board. And does it also have the... Uh... No, I don't see the power amps on there. And this is your main board. That's very cool. Tell you, uh, Manuel and Guido did a wonderful job in designing this. And what I mean by that is, if you look, everything that you see here on top of this board are all off-the-shelf simple parts. A little microphone capsule, a little tiny headphone speaker, three simple um, audio jacks, Tactile switches, rotary encoder. I mean, that's how they managed to keep the cost down. But they didn't skimp on the design. I mean, look, they even uh, they labeled the headers so that everything goes together nicely. And they thought it out ahead of time and said, well, what if folks, you know, uh, want a different set of filters? Well, you can get or make a different filter board. You're not limited. To, whoop, to these particular uh, set of frequencies. There is also an ICSP header right there that you can use to um, update the firmware and bootloader in here. So let me get this put back together and we'll take a look at the output power. Okay, I know I said I'd come back once I put it back together, but take a look at this 3d design this is really really nice see the little slots in there they allow everything to line up just right and hold everything exactly where it's supposed to be just really really nice work here <laughs> Except I think I put the board in upside down. All right, we are back together. We got the uh, questionable Chinese watt meter hooked up. And we are on uh, 40 meters. So I got to bring this up pretty close here. But uh, keep your eye on the watt meter there, uh, maybe the power max. 
Is this frequency in use? WW8PR is testing, testing, testing. One, two, three. So it looks like 3.8 watts on uh, 40 meters. Let's go down to 20 meters. And to do that, we need to press the menu, band, click it. 20 meters, click. Now we're on uh, 20 meters. Go up here in the general portion of the band. Listen for a few seconds. Is this frequency in use? WW8 PR. Don't hear anybody. This is WW8 PR testing the true SDX radio. Testing, testing, one, two, three, one, two, three. So on 20 meters, looks like we're getting 2.7 watts. If I'm not mistaken, that's as low as she goes. I don't have a very good match on 80 meters, so those are the only bands that uh, I can test. Let's take a, a quick look through the menu here. So there's one. We start with the volume. Then we have mode. You know, upper sideband, lower sideband, CW. Uh, AM, FM, I think. Let's see what we got. Upper sideband, CW, FM, AM. Yep, then we're back to upper sideband. Uh, we have filter width. So that's 4K, 3K, 2K, 4, 1K, 8 all the way down to 500 for CW. So that's that's pretty nice right there. Uh, then we, you know, their band we changed there, our tuning rate, VFO A or B, uh, receiver incremental tuning on or off, automatic gain control, noise reduction. Wow, oh, noise reduction, holy cow. Let's see how that works. All right, here we go. So then I knew exactly what color goes into what pin. And of course, it's in the manual as well, but I made an, an extra one, and so I did that. Everything worked out just fine. And of course, so there I was no noise reduction. Voltmeter, and just to make sure I was uh, the right one. continuity for the right pin. And I did that. Now, my rotor Level is mounted two. two feet off the ground. That's what you guys have done. The lumber. So that's, is, uh, that's, uh, that's pretty unus yeah, unusable. That's, uh, that's not great. Attenuator, that's very good. Two attenuators, okay. S meter can be set for S and S bar. Words per minute. Let's see what it looks like on S bar. Oh, yeah. And yeah, there we go. Let me see if I can find a strong signal. Hang on. Yeah, so that works out pretty good. That's kind of neat. SWR meter forward power plus SWR. What other choices do we have? Forward plus reflected. Power plus effective. Power plus VSS. SWR meter is off. Forward. What's SWR? Okay. Interesting. 
C oh, it has a CW decoder. How cool is that? Semi QSK, keyer speed, keyer mode, keyer swap, practice mode. Uh, it works in Vox. That's good. Oh, it's got a noise gate. TX drive level. Okay. TX delay. CQ interval. CQ message. I'm not sure what that is. PA bias. Min okay. So you can even adjust the, uh, the bias of the power amp. Give it a little more, a little less, you know. PA bias max. Reference frequency. Resistor shunt, maybe receiver shunt, not sure. Low pass filter configuration. And that's the firmware version. So it looks like some of these things are more um, a pain in the butt than they are. Let me zoom in here. Now, if you look right next to the upper part whoops, of this number six here. See where it looks like there's a spec? That's not a spec. That is your tuning indicator. And if I click this, it moves. See it down there on the one? Or now it's back to the six. So that works like very good like that. And then also for the volume, you don't have to go to the menu. If you just click and turn, you can adjust your volume that way. And truly this speaker is, oops, horrible, just horrible. See what happens? You get that. Anything over about eight gives you that horrible whine, which is why everybody recommends that you use a uh, external speaker with this. So that is our quick look at the True SDX. Um, the price for this assembled, I haven't seen them being sold here in the United States as kits. I'm sure they are. Um, the price assembled for this is like $130. So that really, you know knocks the barrier to entry out if you want to start playing around with radio mainly for listening at five watts you're going to have a hard time being heard unless you have a very nice antenna but that's another discussion for another day i'd like to thank uh jim for letting me borrow this and show it to you guys and i'd like to thank you guys for you know taking the time to spend with me and watch this video i truly appreciate it so i hope you liked it and if you did i hope you'll give me a thumbs up Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.